Yeah. So just to give a little bit of, um, you know, context and kind of play off some of the things you mentioned, um, you know, in Leo started as steam Leo on July 3rd, uh, 2019. So we're coming up here on five years, um, you know, in about, in about six months, it'll be our five year anniversary of when steam Leo launched. And if you remember, and I know some of you guys in the audience have, have been here since those days, um, you know, we started as essentially just a community on the legacy blockchain um, that Hive is obviously forked from. Um, and over time, you know, that evolved. And the vision that I had for all of this stuff was that we would create essentially a decentralized version of Seeking Alpha where you'd have, you know, finance authors, finance and crypto, since we were pretty crypto you know, heavy back in those days, um, and, and still are, you know, the idea was that we would have a group of authors create this community, um, and grow the community around the topic of democratizing knowledge and access to finance. And that vision has, has evolved with time as the project has evolved. So obviously back in those days, you know, Leo wasn't really worth anything. Um, you know, we didn't even have our own UI. Uh, it, it was later on that we, you know, spun up our own UI uh, and started building, you know, from scratch. Um, the original UI we had was um, a, you know, I mean, obviously we started with just a community front uh, front end, and then we forked the condenser front end, which you guys know is, you know, Hive blog. Um, yeah, I see the time travelers say he was here since the legacy legacy chain days. Yeah, so I mean, you guys know that a lot has changed since then. You know, we had a fork of the condenser UI. Um, and then ultimately, we were, we kind of moved towards this vision of having our own UI, um, having our own apps that supported the UI. You know, we built things like Leo Dex. Um, you know, we built DeFi apps over the years. Um, and just ultimately, the, the idea was just to keep expanding the reach of uh, Leo. Um, in terms of you know that that vision of democratizing access and knowledge to finance because the knowledge part was was achieved through long form content and then you had the access part kind of built up through the other apps um and kind of opening up that world uh to the to the community um so over time as as the ui evolved the vision evolved as well and our vision now is is very similar to you know the original vision um, and I would say that the original vision is a part of what the new one is. Um, and now the, the vision is just kind of opened up um, to kind of a broader, you know, mission statement. So um, I don't know how many of you have actually read the docs, but we did finally release the docs after so many years of me working on them. And I finally just took out a bunch of stuff and then left what I thought was the most important aspects of it. So. Uh, I definitely recommend reading it. I, I've been surprised that there hasn't been more feedback on it. So it's at docs.inleo.io if you want to go read it. But just to read you a little sentence from the, from those docs, just to you know revisit our mission statement. Inleo's mission is to build a thriving creator economy that is centered around digital ownership, tokenization, and communities. So you can kind of hear that resounding effect or resounding idea of democratizing financial knowledge and access, but you hear it in a more, uh, you know, a more open and diverse format, um, which I think sets up in Leo nicely for what we've become. So, you know, moving from Steam Leo to Leo Finance, we carried along that financial vision. Um, but then over time from Leo Finance, and, and we are now on our fourth iteration of a UI built from scratch. Um, and with the current UI, I don't, I don't really foresee us building another UI from scratch. I think we learned so much from the other ones um, that we, you know, we've built this one as a, you know, kind of a time tested um, format where it's just going to be something that we continually add to and refine as opposed to something we have to go back to the drawing board and rebuild. So Leo Finance being focused on long form blogging, you know, like Eric was talking about, um, and then we moved, obviously, you know, with the rebrand, uh, we started with, you know, a very early alpha version of threads on the old UI. And then on May 1st of 2023, we released the new UI. 
and then later in the year, we rebranded from Leo Finance to InLeo. And the idea there is obviously that we've opened up that mission statement. So along with that, there's been other changes going on in the back end um, to open up in Leo to a broader audience and open up the Leo token to a broader audience than just crypto and finance. And we've been, and, and I know Eric works heavily on the perception of Leo and, and the marketing of Leo. So we've been working pretty hard to change that perception in various ways. And, and one thing that we've been, you know, sh struggling with, but also just, you know, it, it takes time to remap the way that people think about, you know, Leo finance and now in Leo um, has been, creating content that isn't just crypto and finance, but the ability to create content that's about any topic. Um, so Threads opens us up and and I like that Eric explained it as kind of like the, you know, the door that, that starts everything. So it's like the first door you open um, and, and you get to know the community, you get to do things in the community and it's, it's a low barrier to entry. You don't have to write, you know, a 500 word blog post. You can just make a quick thread, post a picture of your lunch, whatever and you know get started so i like i like that vision and and that you know use case that we are like x in that you know anyone can come here and make content really easily and it's not you know super high um you know barrier to entry but you know long form definitely needs more love on on in leo long form has a huge place on the platform we still get a ton of long form views i would say the majority of our external uh, content or, or traffic to content comes from long form. Um, so, you know, being that, you know, long form has this huge place on InLeo, um, you know, it's going to take some time and, and, you know, effort to build up the long form section of InLeo. And you guys have seen that we've done a ton of updates on that end, um, you know, both with the community pages and with, uh, you know, just the articles page in, in general. Um, you know, I, I think there's been, and, and talking to a bunch of people, there's been a lot of, um, the, the, there's been a lot of people that haven't seen the, um, the updated version of articles on InLeo. Um, they, they, they're used to, you know, on May 1st, obviously we launched it and there wasn't even long form on the UI when we launched on May 1st. It was like, it, it really wasn't even there. So we've added all this stuff over time. Um, and it, it's gotten a lot better and I think there's still a lot of room to improve it as well. Um, so some of these changes we've made to the back end lately uh, are some of the things we're going to announce. Um, I think Eric dropped off and then came back on. Eric, do you have anything you want to jump in before I announce? Yes. No, I, I spaces is glitching and apparently from mobile you cannot, like there's some times that you, you just get booted and you cannot hear, but now I'm here. No, 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 I don't have anything to add. I can't wait to hear for the news, to hear the news. Sweet, sweet. Um, yeah, I've been having a lot of trouble with spaces lately too. Um, so a few things to announce here. Um, I would say the biggest announcement, let's just start with the big guns and then, and then we'll talk about the other things. Um, the biggest announcement is a change to the Leo rewards pool and how content gets indexed for that rewards pool. So, you know, this is a relatively big change uh, made to the back end. It's obviously something that you're not really going to see or notice uh, from the front end in any sort of way. Um, so prior to today, if you made content and you wanted to earn Leo tokens, all you had to do was tag your blog posts with Leo or Leo Finance, um, and then your post would be eligible. And we're talking about long form here, not threads your post would be eligible for Leo uh, rewards pool rewards. So that means that if you if you create a blog post and you don't tag Leo uh, or Leo Finance, you would have, your, your blog post would have earned Hive rewards, but not Leo rewards. Um, and that's just because, you know, obviously our, our backend was searching for anything tagged uh, with those two tags, and then it would be eligible to get upvotes and earn Leo. Um, so the big change now is that, um, and, and that essentially allowed anybody to, you know, say, okay, my, my content is about crypto and finance. And, and this is why I spent so much time on the backstory. Anyone could say my content is about crypto and finance. So I am going to tag my blog post with Leo or Leo finance. And then, um, and then from there I can earn, you know, Leo tokens. Cause it's about the topic that Leo is about, obviously with the change to in Leo. 
that was the big moment where it's like, okay, now we've got threads, uh, we've got long form and you know, the branding is no longer finance. It's not Leo finance, it's in Leo. Um, so the, the branding is more broad. Um, the, you know, topic set with threads is obviously more broad as well. And the vision of the platform is about, you know, creating essentially a digital oasis for, uh, you know, content creators and users. It's, it's no longer just crypto and finance. So, you know, this big backend change now, if you were to create a blog post, um, about any topic, we want you to be able to earn Leo. Um, and some people have already caught on to this. So we noticed a lot of people were tagging Leo finance, even when it wasn't crypto and finance. And, and that was good. Like we were trying to get people to change that perception. And that's also why we added the tag Leo, uh, as well. So that people knew, knew they could just tag Leo, even if it wasn't crypto and finance related. Um, so the change that we've just made, and this coincides with some of the other changes and, and there's four bullet points in the main, um, in the main thread cast. Uh, for this. So you, you obviously have already seen them. Uh, but the, the main change is that now in order to be eligible for the Leo rewards pool, your blog post has to be published from inleo.io. So you don't need to tag Leo finance. You don't need to tag Leo. You don't need to publish in the Leo finance community. If you publish a blog post into any community page uh, and using any set of tags, as long as that blog post is published from inleo.io, it's eligible for the Leo rewards pool. And th this change is, is going to be met with probably some criticism. I think mostly it's going to be popular amongst the community. That's, that's my prediction amongst the people, you know, Leo power holders. Um, I think there are some people on hive who, who may look at this and, and be upset about it. Um, but when you look at the way this platform is built, and I know Taskmaster just posted a, a blog post two hours ago about this. So when he jumps on the speaker panel, I'm sure we can dive into it more. But the, you know, we're building a flywheel of value for Inleo. And when you look around to pretty much any crypto platform, 99% of them, uh, as well as, you know, looking at the social five platforms and even Hive itself, you know, there's a, there's a huge lack of business awareness and, there's a huge lack of, of focusing on generating revenue uh, that, you know, feeds into the token economy and keeps the economy propelled. When you look at any economy, you know, you need to have some sort of flow inflow. So you can't just have, you know, an economy where there's just, you know, inflation and it's just paying out to everybody to do stuff. You know, it's fine to pay people out, you know, via inflation to do things that benefit the platform. But if you're not monetizing that activity, uh, it just becomes, you know, wh like, what are you even doing? If you're just paying out value and not, and the platform isn't capturing value, you're essentially just leaking value every single day. Um, so the Leo token rewards pool is about 6,000 Leo per day. And uh, the majority of that Leo goes to uh, content creators and curators on inleo.io. So in order to capture value, one of the big ways is Leo ads, obviously. Um, and Leo ads are displayed on long form and short form. You guys have seen them. Um, and in order to capture that value, you need people using the UI. So why would we be paying? And this was the question that was posed to me, you know, by several different people, which kind of led to the ultimate change was why, why would we be paying out Leo to people who aren't using the UI? Because, you know, if we are, we're essentially paying people to not benefit the platform in any sort of, in any sort of way. Um, so that's a, you know, that's kind of a key piece for us, um, is, is a refocus on when people are doing things that benefit the platform and the platform is actually capturing, you know, tangible value from those activities. We want to, we want to make sure that, that Leo as a token is capturing the value, not just leaking it out and allowing people to earn it, you know, when they're not doing things that actually, um, you know, lead to that value capture. So that is, uh, you know, that is the big change. And I saw Brando 28 just said, so basically this change is nothing for us who, who use the Leo front end constantly. Um, essentially, yes. Like if you're posting your blog post from in Leo.io already, which I know many of you are as, you know, hardcore lions, uh, yeah, like you don't have to do anything different. Um, the big change now is that like, 
if you want to post, you know, your ladies on hive community blog post or your, you know, gardening blog post into the gardening community page, uh, you don't need to do anything with the tags. You don't need to do anything with the community that you're posting to. You don't have to post to the Leo finance community. You could post to any community, um, just like a regular blog post on any other, you know, front end and you will still earn Leo because you're posting it from in Leo.io and you're using the platform, which is, you know, obviously generating value in terms of ads. Um, and then also in terms of traffic, because, uh, you know, a big thing that, that, uh, you know, people need to talk about when it comes to SEO and, and generating traffic is canonical links. And, you know, put simply, a canonical link is just the way that search engines recognize who owns the content. So on Hive, we have kind of an interesting setup because you have all these different front ends that pull from the Hive back end. So when search engines read content, uh, we need to basically tell them who owns what, what piece of content. So when you post from inleo.io, we tell search engines, you uh you own that content um and you know that's that's vital for in leo to generate long-term traffic and and obviously more authority amongst search engines so that's a big reason as well for for the change um we've coincided a couple other things but let me answer a quick question i see a couple people asking what about for videos like from three speak so if you post a video on youtube take the link and then post it from inleo.io Obviously, that counts as you earning Leo tokens. I know there's a lot of people that do that. I also know there's a lot of people that post three speak videos and then, you know, put them in the Leo finance community. Um, so in the near future, and we've been working on this, um, two things with video. So we've been working on Leo shorts, which I know a lot of you are excited about. Um, that's been a big battle for us on the back end, but we are still building that. And then we're also working on the ability to upload long form video uh, from directly from the publisher UI. Um, so we've built the front end for this. Now we're just working on the back end. Um, and I know Ecency added this, you know, a couple months back. And then a lot of, a lot of people were telling us that we should add it as well. Uh, I had a vision for, you know, how I wanted this UI to work. And you guys know, if you follow my account at all, I post a lot of videos. So I post a lot of videos from three speak. I post a lot of videos from YouTube. Um, there's obviously, you know, the weekly AMAs, the weekly chain chatters, and then all of the you know clips we get from that. So I'm I'm always posting videos almost on a daily basis. So this update for the for the front end to be able to post long form videos is going to come very soon. Um, and then you'll obviously be back to earning Leo tokens from your three speak videos. You'll just be posting them directly from our our UI uh, as opposed to another front end. So uh, that is the you know big big announcement. Some of the other announcements, which are, you know, kind of legs to the main announcement um, are around, you know, evergreen rewards, uh, the curation changes and the new publisher UI. So some of you guys have seen, we've made a lot of updates to the publisher UI uh, in terms of usability, in terms of, you know, visual, being visually appealing. Um, and we have a lot, a lot of updates on the way to make it even better. Uh, including Leo AI, which you'll be able to ask for help if you're, uh, you got to be premium, but if you're a premium user, you'll be able to use Leo AI from the publisher UI um, to actually help you, you know, create content. And there are going to be some limitations. Like we don't want people saying, okay, write me three paragraphs about this uh, because then, you know, obviously you've got a lot of AI generated content, but it will be able to say, okay, uh, read my last, you know, read the last paragraph I wrote. Um, and explain to me what is good or bad about this paragraph. Um, maybe write the next sentence to help me, you know, cause I'm, I'm stuck. Uh, but it won't just write, you know, lengthy sentences and paragraphs. Um, and Leo AI is also trained on, um, it's also trained on all of your threads and we're working on indexing all of the blog posts as well. And it's also trained on rewards. So you can ask it questions like, take my last 10 blog posts and tell me which ones earned the highest rewards and then compare it to the blog post I'm writing now and tell me what you think I can do better uh, in order to, you know, earn more on my blog posts. So you can use it to help you, uh, you know, earn more, create better content, you know, do grammar checks, all sorts of great things like that. Um, so the publisher UI is something that we put a lot of effort into recently. Um, and I know there's, there's a bug right now with beneficiaries. If you try to add more than two, uh, it gives you an error. So we're working on that. 
uh, working on any any bugs you guys find, create a thread and use hashtag feedback, and we are working on it. Um, so the publisher UI is getting a lot of love right now. It's getting a lot of focus. Uh, the articles page is getting a lot of focus as well. You guys, many of you have seen, we just launched the new search feature. Uh, so if you haven't tried it yet, I highly recommend it. Um, we're working on indexing blog posts for that search feature as well. Um, so in general, the you know TLDR is that there's a lot of focus right now going into uh, the long form uh, parts of the UI. Um, and then on the other changes, Evergreen Rewards, um, you guys saw that the first Leo ads payment went out, uh, I think it was like the 18th or something of January. And the next one goes out on February 1st, and then it's on the first of the month, every month from now on. Um, there's two parts to that payment. One is based on Leo Power holders. You have to be an active Leo Power curator, uh, and then it's based on how much Leo Power you have. And the other part to it is, uh, is based on Evergreen, which is it takes all of the views from all of your blog posts that you've ever created, and it pays you based on those views uh, every single month. So the you know big um, the, the the big aspect of that is that all of your blog it only um, counts blog posts posted from inleo.io, and that was already implemented you know well before this Leo token change uh, to the you know the tags and and posting from the UI was made. So it coincides nicely because in order to earn evergreen rewards, you have to publish from the inleo.io UI. So now we've got the aspect of if you want to earn Leo rewards, you have to post from the inleo.io uh, UI. And then if you want to earn the evergreen rewards, you also have to post from the UI anyways. So it just makes you know double sense essentially to post from the UI. And then if you're a Leo token holder, obviously you want more ad revenue. You want to see more Leo get bought off the market. Um, that is the you know, that is going to happen from content that's posted from the UI directly. And, and like I was talking about with canonical URLs, it's very important that content is posted from the UI um, if we want to capture this value. Otherwise, you know, and it's totally fine for other UIs. And, you know, I, I think other UIs have different business models and different ideas of what they're doing um, versus us, which we are focused on capturing value for the Leo token. Um, so being that that's our focus, uh, that's why this change was made. Um, like I said, I think it's going to be met with maybe some um, debate, but ultimately, if you look at the value capture of the Leo token and what's best for, you know, the Leo token in the long run, uh, this is definitely a, a positive change. Uh, one of the other big changes is to Leo.voter. So before, uh, before today, uh, and, and we've kind of been doing this for the past week, but really before today, officially, um, Leo.voter was mostly curating content in the Leo Finance community. Uh, and then obviously we were just kind of looking for quality content across the UI. We've made some blog posts on the at Leo growth account about this. Um, but the big change now is that Leo, in order to get curated by Leo.voter, you, your blog post has to be published from in Leo.io. So that's the first criteria in order to get curated. The next criteria is around quality. So if you post, you know, a picture of your cat and two words, we're not going to, uh, be curating that with Leo.voter. Um, and, and anyways, that would be better as a thread. So, um, you know, Leo.voter won't be curating uh, bad quality content. So there's still quality standards. Um, so keep that in mind. So the first aspect is you got to be posted from in Leo.io. The second uh, variable is that you have to have quality content. And, and you know, there's blog posts that we can link to that, uh, you know, talk about what quality content is to us. Um, as a community and platform, uh, ultimately it's, it surrounds, you know, driving in views and, and being friendly to search engines. Um, and then the third aspect is, so, so just to recap, you got to post from in there.io, you have to post quality content. And then the third aspect is, are you premium or are you not? If you are not premium, you still get curated by Leo.voter, uh, under essentially the same standards that we were before. Um, so it's not like you have to be premium to get curated. And I think there's going to be a lot of misconception about that. But, uh, if you are premium, then the percent of the voting weight that we use is significantly higher. Um, and it, it it's a significant difference. So the idea here, and you can kind of see the theme of everything I've talked about is we've taken a really hard look, especially during this bear market, which has hit 
every altcoin extremely hard. I mean, Leo is not the only token that went down 98% in value. I mean, this is this bear market. It was actually the longest bear market in history for crypto. Um, it was like over 700 days. And I saw so many projects and founders that I knew that had to walk away from their projects and close shop because uh, they didn't survive. Um, so we've taken, you know, a very hard look at things throughout this bear market. Um, and that's what what's made Leo not only survive, but obviously, you know, be be more than surviving and, and be actually building a new UI and building threads and finally releasing Project Blank. We did all of this during the bear market. So we didn't just survive, but we thrived uh, in the bear market. We managed to build out the team and add a lot of new players uh, to our roster. Um, while most other projects were just kind of floundering and failing. Um, and, and part of this hard look is, you know, what are, where are we leaking value and why are we leaking this value? Um, and how can we kickstart, you know, a flywheel of, you know, value capture for the Leo token. So by looking at all this stuff, you can see all these changes kind of coincide to build up what we've, what we've seen as the best ways to stop leaking value and start fully capturing it. Um, and that is surrounding, you know, getting to a thousand premium subscribers and we're at 200 right now. Um, or I think we need one more to be 200. So if you're listening to this and you're not premium, go subscribe and you'll be the 200th, um, premium member. Um, so, you know, premium is a huge part of it. Ad revenue is a huge part of it. Evergreen rewards is there to reward people for generating traffic. Uh, Leo.voter has been changed to now focus on people who are generating good content that that generates views uh, and then also focusing on premium members because doing both of those things captures more value to Leo. Um, and then obviously you've got the Leo rewards pool change, uh, which is the big one where your content has to be posted from inleo.io um, in order to be eligible for the rewards pool. And then it also opens up, you know, the, the big piece of that is that it opens us up for more uh, varied content. So like if you write you know, a 500 word blog post about, you know, uh, the best practices for gardening in 2024, uh, then that is some, still eligible for Leo token rewards as long as it's posted from the UI. So um, I uh, am very excited about these changes. I think it's going to have, like I said, it, it's heavily focused on capturing more value to the Leo token. And I'm excited to see the, you know, the positive effects and the ramifications of doing all of this. Um, so, uh, Eric, I know you've got, uh, you got to run soon, but do you have, do you want to jump in before you go and, and talk about this at all? Yes. So, uh, you know, what this excite what, what excites me the most about this is that it all makes sense in a general, like if you look at it from, from a, an outsider general point of view where, you know, you, you don't earn Facebook uh, ad revenue for posting on Twitter. You don't earn uh, Instagram ad revenue for, you know, so the people who are creating content and are providing value to in Leo are the ones who are going to get the most benefit out of it. That doesn't mean that we are, we are neglecting everyone else because as we said, well, well, as you said, the content that deserves to get rewarded will still get rewarded. It's just that we are going to up a little bit of the uh, percentage of the votes and the rewards allocated to those who are premium, to those who use in Leo, to those who put everything, like all of their high engagement goes through in Leo. Because in the end, more engagement means more traffic. More traffic means more, more ad revenue and more ad revenue means more value that comes from the outside, from people who are paying advertisement in, in Leo, that's money that comes into Hive. And in the end, it's money that gets, maybe that get, gets uh, bought for Hive. May, maybe people just, just trade the token for Splinterlands, or maybe they, they, they just sell it to pay for their expenses, whatever, they can do whatever they want. But in the end, it's inflows that come into Hive. And that's exactly what we're trying to do. And in the end, it, it sort of points to some uh, concept of self self sustainability when at one point the advertisement revenue is going to dwarf the reward pool both the hive and the leo one and then users will not depend on the allocation from the inflation they they will be able to generate enough 
revenue from traffic. But to do that, we need to push traffic. So I hope that everyone who's in the audience and listening in the future understands that all of this is aiming to generate traffic, to generate people that generates impressions in a Web3 way. We are not selling data. We are not even collecting data. So there are like we we took the best of Web2, which is inflows from, from advertisement. And then we remain Web3 in a sense that we do not trespass your privacy we are transparent and everything is unchanged so yeah i'm just really really excited to see how how this affects the the traffic and most importantly how we use this to leverage as a team so that we bring in more people into the ecosystem which in the end is our goal our goal is uh 10, 000 users i think you, well it was 10,000 users last year, so it remains the same one, and hopefully we get to that, um, I don't know, before the end of the quarter three, maybe? Well, I don't know. Just let, let's get it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, we're at, I think, uh, you know, close to 2,000 monthly active users right now, so we've seen very significant growth the, at the start of 2023. So exactly one year ago, uh, we were at around 400 monthly active users. So, you know, we have, you know, we have essentially 5x or close to 5x our, our user base, um, you know, being that we're going to cross 2000 pretty soon. Um, and we've seen a, a really nice uptick in traffic recently, um, you know, just in the past kind of week or two. Um, and we've also seen a huge growth in the premium subscribers. Obviously, you guys have seen uh, the big kind of refocus and, and shift to focusing on growing the, the premium subscriber base. So I think we were at about 150, uh, you know, kind of average uh, in terms of premiums up until the past kind of week uh, when we started pushing it. And now we are at um, we're at 200. So. Uh, you know, 30% growth, really significant growth. And we're going to kind of continue on that trend. Um, and obviously I've set the aggressive target for the team. Uh, and I've got this aligned between the developers and with Eric and, you know, other members of the team that our focus is entirely on getting to 1000 premiums by uh, the end of Q1, um, which is March 31st of this year. So, you know, we've got, you know, we got essentially two months left to get to a thousand premiums uh, from the current 200. So it's a lot of growth. It's not going to be, you know, super easy. It's going to be something that we work on on a daily basis. You guys have probably seen that I talk about it literally every day on threads. Um, and I'm, I'm talking about it every single day. I'm checking in with all of the team members to say, you know, what have you done today to get more premium subscribers? So this has become a number one focus, a big reason for that is that value capture flywheel. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of resounding impacts that you have from the Leo token performing well. Um, you know, obviously we're, we're up about 2X from the bottom of the bear market. You know, we dropped all the way down to, you know, almost like two and a half cents uh, at one point. So we're up essentially 2X from the bottom uh, of the bear market. And, you know, I see this huge flywheel that's been building up uh, with premium. And I've talked, I talked about this in a blog post I wrote about five days ago. Uh, if you want to check it from my, my profile, but you know, for the past five years, we've been building, you know, products related to the Leo token, and we've been attempting to capture value into the Leo token. Um, one thing that has really changed for me is the launch of premium. I, I really saw a key difference in, uh, you know, this platform that the main product we're building is obviously the UI and, and creating a great experience for all the users, uh, all of you guys, um, you know, that is the main product, but the monetizable main product of Inleo has never really existed. I mean, we've had ads, um, you know, but advertising, I, I don't consider advertising to really be a product. It's definitely a revenue stream. Um, but the real product now to me is premium. It is, it is a legitimate product where customers pay for it every single month. Um, and that is really exciting to me, you know, seeing that there are a lot of you that really enjoy premium and you guys enjoy the custom themes. You enjoy being able to create longer threads, um, you know, and all of the other aspects of premium that are, that are fun to use on the UI. 
uh, is really cool to me. And, and I want to just keep adding more features to that. You guys have seen me teasing the new dashboard uh, where there's, you know, there's a basic view dashboard where you can view uh, analytics about your account, your Hive account. And then if you're, there's an advanced view button at the top, right. And if you're not premium and you click advanced, it says, uh, you know, you need to join premium in order to access uh, the advanced view. Um, and if you are premium, you obviously get access to that view. So, you know, building in really cool features like that, where there's like, it's a very freemium model. Like you don't need to be premium to enjoy the UI and do, uh, you know, 90% of everything on the UI, but there's that extra 10% of features that give it a kind of more custom feel, a more exclusive feel. Um, that is kind of the freemium model that we're chasing after. Um, and I see most people in the threadcast are premium. So I'd say like 90% of you guys are premium right now. So, um, you know, growing from 200 to a thousand is going to be difficult. We're going to need your help. You know, if you invite one or two hive friends that, you know, uh, to sign up for premium, that would be, you know, huge in getting to that, that 1000 goal. Um, the big change to Leo.voter uh, is that, you know, if you post quality content, like I said, there's those three things. If you, uh, you know, post from the UI, post quality content, and then if you're premium, you'll get bigger upvotes uh, from Leo.voter. So I kind of like to say that it's like premium that pays for itself. You know, imagine if on X you became premium, uh, you know, and, and you got your blue check mark on X, and then they, you know, they curated you for over, you know, whatever that cost was per month, like, like just say $10, because that's what we've got. So just say that they curate you for over $10 a month, every single month, you know, that's premium that pays for itself, provided that you are also creating good content and active on the UI and, and all that stuff. So um, it's a really cool model to me. I think it's a really unique model because we're web three, uh, we're capable of doing something like this, um, where we've got the high rewards pool, and we've got the Leo rewards pool, and we're able to reward uh, people who are premium. We have this really nice circular economy now where we're able to reward you guys for doing things that create value for the platform. And Inleo is able to capture that value through both premium and through ad revenue. So I really like that we've kind of closed this loop with premium. I think it's a huge positive step forward. Um, so now it's about scaling it. I think premium, you know, you guys have seen, we made a ton of changes to the premium, uh, onboarding rails. So, you know, I haven't really seen, uh, I actually haven't seen any failed premium subscriptions. So if you subscribe to premium, it works pretty much within two minutes, you'll see your check mark show up and all the features activated. Um, the, the last kind of key piece to the puzzle is that I see a lot of people still use random memos when they sign up. Um, so I, I am working on something where the UI will detect if you used a, a false memo and it'll either refund you or it'll, uh, activate the premium anyways. Um, so that's kind of the last piece of the puzzle there. But other than that, it's, it's, there are no bugs in the, in the, uh, HBD payment rail, uh, for premium. So there's going to be that change. And then there's also going to be, and I know Eric's been pushing me for this. Um, there's going to be a year, uh, subscription option where you can subscribe for 12 months. Uh, so I know a lot of you guys are kind of looking for something like that. Uh, so that's going to be one of the next things that we work on, um, for the premium onboarding rail. Um, and, you know, I overall just really excited about what premium means for, uh, the Leo token and, and our community. I, I think it really closed the loop of value capture, like I said, so focusing on not leaking value and focusing on capturing the value. So that's, that's really become my main focus and, and a big reason for the announcement and all the changes that we've kind of pushed forward, uh, today. Um, so. We've got John and Task now in the um, speaker panel. I invited Nifty. I don't know. Nifty might be uh, busy either with work or hustling on the Amazon books. So I invited him to speak. We'll see if he's around. Um, and Eric, I don't know if you're still around for a few minutes, but um, feel free to jump in whenever you want. I will let let some of our, our – go ahead, Eric. Yeah, I, I was just gonna say that I'm I'm still here, still waiting on what I have to do. But in 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 the meantime, I can still chip into the conversation. And I just want to to uh, first before Task Nifty and John uh, uh, get the mic, guys, just scroll down and you will see there's a lot of people with a yellow background. Uh, that's that's branding. That's the Leo Finance branding, and you know it's pretty easy to get that. And that way, 
whenever we are uh, as a community in a space, let's just say, for example, uh, we have Banana here in the audience. She's a space host. Let's say that Banana invites Carl to speak in a space, and then Carl invites the Leo finance or the, the in Leo community to sorry, I I, I uh, fro, Freudian slip uh, the in Leo community to attend that. That way, anyone who is from in Leo will show, hey, I'm here for the banana space and I'm here representing in Leo or I'm part of the in Leo community. So that's a very visual way of showing how, how uh, many numbers we have in the Web3 space on X. So if you want that background, just send me a DM on Discord and I will get it for you uh, so that you can show that you are a lion. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it uh jungo what's up man do you wanna <clears throat> what what are your thoughts on all of this what's going on guys uh dude i mean you know don't need to convince me i mean um what did i do today bought leo <laughs> i don't really have a very exciting life guys uh yeah no dude, it's great i mean this is especially you mentioned the uh the, the yellow backgrounds um you know i'm i'm uh um, you hear me hello can you guys hear i can't hear anything Guys, your, your I, mic might be muted. I can hear Jungo, but it's probably a space oh, glitch. Uh, John, can you oh. jump out and in again? Probably something like that, because I'm going to be able to moderate in a few minutes. So uh, if you just jump yeah, out yeah. and in yeah, again. Yeah, okay. just give me a sec. Yeah. Task, can you, uh, like, do you want to say something while John, John comes back? Uh, yeah, I can. Um. I, I think one of the things Cal mentioned a number of times, and I, I don't think the listeners probably are too familiar with what this is, uh, the flywheel effect basically is the idea that for a business, or, or more specifically a platform, digital platform, is small wins accumulate over time. And the idea is to capture small incremental uh, growth in value, capture the aggregate and spread it over the entire platform. And so when he talks about the flywheel effect, he, he comes at it from a financial angle, which, which is fine, because that's what a lot of businesses look at. They talk about flywheel with regards to, to revenues and profits and, and things of that nature. I come at it from a little different angle. I come for at it from a, a secondary network effect angle, and that's what I'm working on with, you know, Leo Glossary, Music on Leo, and, and stuff like that. And I'm, I'm going to be putting it in a post tonight, so I won't really go and take up too much time with this. But the, the big idea is Leo is a digital platform. And I've talked about if you have a Hive account, you are a business. If you are on Leo, you are a business. Start thinking like a business owner. Do not think like a user. For example, one of the things, stop asking for features. Ask for tools. Now, they may be one and the same. Like I've said, one of the tools I need for Music on Leo is polls. Now, polls is a feature of the platform but it's a tool that I am going to use to enhance what we've already done. And so my point being, with a digital platform, with everything Cal explained, stop looking at Cal, stop looking at Nomad Soul, stop looking at the development team. Look at yourself. Why? Let's take Apple. Apple is probably one of the best examples, as is Amazon, as is Google, of a digital platform. You have iOS, Apple, Apple built that, Apple builds their phones. But what gives the Apple ecosystem value? It's the apps, for the most part. Who creates the apps? The community, third party developers. Everybody who's creating apps and puts them on the Apple store is enhancing the ecosystem of Apple on behalf of Apple. Now. In my mind, the network effects and all of this with Web3 is going to be a very interesting uh, scenario to watch play out because I think it's going to take things to a different level. But leaving that aside, my point being, 
if you understand network effects, if you understand flywheel, and I'm not talking network effects in the same manner that they're talking about, get more users like social media network effects. No, this is network effects like Google search. This is network effects like Spotify. This is network effects like Uber. And to do that, each and every person on Leo has to be doing the things to incrementally increase the value of what's offered here. The platform will capture it and spread it across the entire ecosystem. The tokenization, the monetization, those pillars are in place now in the docs, as Cal mentioned, to help push that into the value of the token to kick off those flywheel effects from the monetary aspect that he's talking about. But again, it's still going to come back, and this is one of the reasons why Anybody who's on thread sees a bunch of music going up there. Why is that? We're talking about clicks here. And I, I, I brought this up with John Go on Cryptomaniacs. If we could go out and look at all the articles ever written, how many of them have a million lifetime views? If you could do that, you'd probably only find a handful of articles with a million lifetime views. Now go find me uh, songs on YouTube that have a million views. And okay, granted, they may be monkeyed with, with bots and things of that nature. But the point being, you will find thousands upon thousands upon thousands of songs on YouTube that have millions of views on them. That's the point. Yes, it's great to get more people coming in from the outside. But we also have to provide the ability for people who are here, the three, four, five, six, seven, eight hundred lions who are on Leo every day, getting them to do more because that's what pushes the numbers up and then that's what the marketing people can start running around with they can create their pretty charts that say hey we were at 10,000 clicks a month just three months ago now we're at 40,000 clicks a month per day look at our growth that's what garners more attention from the outside because people want to be part of something that's growing people don't want to be part of something that's dead so when you come to threads and there hasn't been a thread put up in 15 minutes, you sit there and say, nobody's on here. Well, what do you think an outsider sees? And they see no threads in 15, 20, 30 minutes, they're going to say this place is dead. That's where the responsibility lies. And again, this is simple platform business building 101. And look at Amazon, look at Apple, look at Google, look at Uber. Look at these different digital platforms that all of us know by name and look at how they've grown. And it is the flywheel effect because what was Amazon's breakthrough moment? You can't point to one. They went from an online digital bookstore to selling physical books to having Kindle to AWS to this, to that, to this, to that, to this, to that. And suddenly over the course of 20 years, they're taking over the damn world. But they did not have one breakthrough moment. They did not have an iPhone moment. They didn't have anything like that. And that's what we need to do with Leo. It's incremental, but it all does have an impact. 100%. Yeah. We, I think there needs to be a big shift in how people focus on, you know, not only the value that they can create for themselves, but, you know, how they're adding value to the platform. And I know task you've headed up a lot of initiatives like you know leo glossary and music on leo and and you know all these different formats for you know how and, and it seems like to create these things you're just asking yourself you know how can i you know create value for leo which in a big way it comes with you know generating traffic generating you know uh links within the ui that link things to themselves um so definitely a big big thing for the community to shift their focus to, in my opinion. And that is something I've also, you know, you mentioned, you know, ask for tools. That's something I've really shifted my focus to as well is how can, you know, us as a development team give you guys the tools to succeed, you know, as opposed to us doing everything, you know, we, we can't do everything A to Z, but what we can do is build, you know, generic tools that you guys can take and, and run away with. So, you know, one thing, you know, one example kind of being the, um, you know, the search feature for Leo Glossary, you know, that I've, I, I don't know if I've ever made, I, I might've made one or two Leo Glossary entries ever. Um, and there's, you know, thousands or tens of thousands of entries that you, you've done and, and the people you work with have done. 
And what we did was just create a little search function that searches through all the glossary terms. So, um, you know, providing you guys the tools to succeed is what we as a, you know, as the Leo team are here for. Um, and as we've kind of built out the core of the UI, um, you know, the focus is definitely going to be more so on how can we create more tools that just enable you guys to succeed, you know, to, to monetize your accounts, to, you know, build a bigger audience and just to succeed in general and, and have fun on the UI that that's our focus as a team. Um, John, can, or can, Tess, can, I, can, can I add one more thing uh, to that, Cal? Yep. Um, yeah, just one example. And, and when Music on Leo, and, and Music on Leo is a community. It's not only the hashtag, it, it actually is a community that was set up. And when we started putting up music, people said, you know, why are you doing that? You can't find it. It, it has no way of being found. It, it, there's no autoplay. There's no this. There's no that. Understood, as it was. And there are still limitations. In fact, I sent a message to Cal yesterday on an idea of how to maybe get some technical changes to the UI that can adjust how we, we handle the playing of playlists. But anyway, leaving that aside, he mentioned search. Do you know if you go to the community tab, you type in music on Leo, put the space in between, you get the music on Leo community pull up, it pops up, you go to threads, there's a search, just like everywhere else, there's a search. But you type in, in quotes, Pink Floyd, you type in Led Zeppelin, in quotes, you type in Van Halen, in quotes, it will actually do a smart search of all the threads and pull up the threads with those bands, in this instance, in it. Guess what you get? You get all the songs right there in the search that was posted for that particular band or, or a thread that has that name in it. So, as you can see, when they do technical updates and they improve the search, all of a sudden that enhances what has already been built. We don't wait for this stuff to be built before we start building. When it gets built, then it can be incorporated into what we're doing. And that's the point I've always made. Don't worry about where the puck is now, like Wayne Gretzky said. Go to where the puck's going to be. We know the development team keeps building. We know they keep developing. They add more features, more tools, more of this stuff. So get started on whatever your idea is. And if, if you don't see the tool in the pipeline, send a message to Cal. He'll probably put it on the list. Yes, absolutely. Um, and I do have a, you know, huge running list of all the things. So, um, you know, using that hashtag feedback tag is really important. I know I, I say that in literally every AMA. Um, it, I, I'm constantly scrolling that feed. That is my number one bookmarked feed. So I'm always on that feed. Um, so definitely any suggestions or bug reports or anything, just put it in a thread, put as many details as possible and tag it with hashtag feedback so I can, um, you know, focus on it and, and make the changes uh, needed to made, uh, be made. Um, John, so you're back. Um, let me see if I can hear you this time. Testing. Testing. Can you hear me? Yep. Good? You are live and good. Beautiful. Dude, I, and, I'm, and I got a Mac too. Like, geez, these things usually work. Like, I, you know, should be able just to plug them in and they work. But anyways uh yeah no this is great man i mean and and what task said too is something that him and i basically rant about every couple of days on on our podcast is like i, I was looking at the comments in threads and people were like well you know like okay think of uh, think of how we can become businesses like that's a little hard for someone who's just getting into this and uh how, how do i do that i mean it's really not because you got to remember this is different than like Twitter or YouTube. Like if you own Leo, you own Leo. So you owning one Leo, you have a vested stake, a vested interest in using this and using it all the time. And that's again, going back to what me and task rant about all the time is that we just got to use this stuff and create, Leo glossary, create music on Leo, create recipes on Leo, create rants on Leo, create whatever you want. There's you're the owner. You guys can do whatever you want. And that's, what's beautiful about this. There's no 
rules or regulate, obviously, you know, you don't want to be crazy, but there's no one sitting here telling you, you can't talk about cats. You're not allowed to talk about your favorite sports team. You're not allowed to no. go nuts, go and use it, use it as much as you can, because with the Leo ads payout, the more you're creating, the more you're staking, the more you're earning first of the month comes around. We're getting that nice little Leo ads payment into our wallets, which is why I'm trying to cross my fingers and hope that you guys don't buy too much Leo because I want to buy a lot more before it goes to the moon. So, yeah, um, nah, it's great. It's it's exciting. And don't don't get so hung up. I think people, you know, think of it as a business like, oh, I don't you know this, that and the third. No, just go and use it. You'll figure out the business side of it the more you're using it. But treat it like a business. Treat it like you're you you want to engage with people you want to use this stuff each and every day beautiful things will happen here so i mean it's the no-brainer of no-brainer in crypto for me Love yeah, well, Love no, on, uh, on john goes there it's not as if you have to go out and, and necessarily do this on your own uh it's the mindset and do not look at this as competition. Look at this as a, 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 a co-op, a cooperative. Because as Jungo just said, if you own one Leo, you own a piece of Leo. You own a piece of the platform. So it's in all of our best interest to make this as successful as we can and get as much activity going as we can because it's the transactions to use a for lack of a better word that kicks off the flywheel that that cal keeps talking about so if you see something that you can do such as helping out with music on leo such as providing songs doing things of this nature uh when we get the the, the polling back we'll start adding the poll to the songs go there click on the song and actually vote on something that's helping out the platform. And so I think the key point here is at least first switch your mindset from a user to an owner. I have Leo in my wallet. That means, as John Go just said, I own a piece of Leo. Maybe write that down. John Go says, I own a piece of Leo. That should be our, our banner ad and our mantra. With that mindset, you look at things a lot differently. Then you start looking at Leo like Cal has for the last four years, where he's taken at it from a business owner perspective, more so than just a built a, a user perspective. I've taken it as a, from a business owner perspective, more than just a user perspective. And so that's, I think, the important thing. You don't necessarily have to jump on your own thing. I mean, Jimmy Adamas is doing history on Leo. Join him post some things under the, the, the tag, his, you know, with history stuff and, you know, stuff from all over the world with history. Whatever it is, anybody who's doing anything can always use some help. And it doesn't have to be anything magical. It doesn't have to be a huge breakthrough. You don't have to sit, sit there and say, oh, my God, I don't know what to do. When you see RM Sagri and he has one of his EPL thread casts, just jump in there. Drop a couple comments, even if you don't understand football or soccer, don't care about the EPL, just support what he's doing. That'll help him out. Maybe th rethread the, the thread cast. Whatever you can do to help out, that's the important thing. Absolutely. Just, you know, TLDR, get involved. Find ways to get involved. Um, Nifty, you want to jump in at all? Yeah, sorry. Uh, if you called on me earlier, I had to step away for a moment, but I couldn't have said it better. Uh, I think I said this in the last uh, little show we did. I don't remember where, but uh, ask not what you can do for, uh, ask not what the platform can do for you, but what you can do for the platform. I mean, if you want the platform to grow and you want your your Leo tokens to grow in value and stake, use it. I mean, there's no other way to say it. Use the platform, get other people to use it. But at the end of the day, if there's not a thread every, you know, minute or so, it's dead. Just like Task said, bring the place to life. Yes, absolutely. And I think there's, you know, 
there's been a lot of things that we've done as well to kind of bring the place to life even more, you know, in terms of with the thread cast. I know a lot of you guys, I saw a comment that um, someone had never seen the, you know, purple bubbles that light up uh, when you're in a thread cast. So, um, you know, this is adding things like that definitely has an impact, but ultimately, unless you guys and, and back to what Tass said about tools, you know, we can build out these tools. We built out the ability for you guys to run thread casts. But if you're not creating Threadcast or participating in Threadcast, then, you know, what's the point of the tool? Um, so look to these tools that we've made and, and find ways to get involved and, and ultimately add value to the platform. And I think the way that Taskmaster puts it, you know, saying that you should think like an owner is, is incredible. And if more people thought that way, you know, we've got 2,000 monthly active users. If all 2,000 of us thought that way, you know, the platform would look a lot different than it does today. Um, so you guys know the goals, you know, that, you know, the two big goals of getting to a thousand premium subscribers, uh, in the next two months, and then also, you know, getting to 10,000 monthly active users by the end of this year. Um, you know, it, it, it takes all of us coming together, uh, to make that a reality. Um, so I'm going to start cause I, I pulled up while you guys were talking, I pulled up all these questions out of the thread cast. So I'm going to start kind of rapid fire. I've, I've got like 30 of them open, uh, and we're over 200 comments. So. I'm going to start kind of rapid firing through them. Uh, if any of you guys on the speaker panel want to jump in at all, just raise your hand and then I will shut up and let you uh, give your take. Uh, so again, just raise your hand. I will start rapid firing through these questions. Um, Ahmad Manga asked, is there any chance we can pile up months of InLeo premium subscription in advance? Uh, so I, I mentioned earlier, um, we're working on one of the next updates to premium, the HBD premium rail is that we are going to add a six month and 12 month option uh, for subscribing. Um, so I don't have a timeline for that, but at some point in the near future, uh, you will be able to subscribe, um, you know, multiple, multiple months in advance. Um, I have also seen a few people figure out that you can set up a recurring uh, 10 HBD payment every 30 days. So if you know how to do that, you can do it from like the peak DUI. Uh, you can set up a recurring uh, transaction um, and then obviously your subscription would, would then basically be an auto renew. Uh, so you can always do that until, you know, we get, we get that six month and 12 month option. Um, Brando 28 asks, what's the color code of that yellow? Uh, he's referring to what Eric mentioned about, you know, if you look at the X space, there's a bunch of us with yellow backgrounds, um, kind of representing in Leo and it, it allows us to kind of show our, our force when we're in spaces. We actually, we were in the. I forgot which, uh, it was the chain chatter space. And one of the founders that was on said, it, it's awesome to see like how many people from Leo are, are in the space because you can just easily pick them out from the, <coughs> excuse me, from the yellow backgrounds. So uh, if you want the color code, uh, Eric mentioned to DM him and he can help you set up the uh, your profile like that. Uh, so DM Eric. Um, Mr. Hive asks, if one can subscribe for 12 months when that comes, is there going to be a reduced fee charge? Uh, yes, there will be a smaller, uh, there will be essentially like a little bit of a discount if you do 12 months at a time. Um, so all of that, all of those details will be announced when that is ready to go live. Again, I don't have a specific timeline for that yet. Um, Brando asks, uh, if someone is non-premium reading this and think about subscribing, it's totally worth it. Pays itself back very quickly if you're active. Yeah, that is, that is one of our goals with the changes to Leo.Voter that we talked about earlier in this uh, space. Um, you know, it's premium that pays itself. Imagine if you were on X and you were premium or, or blue check marked or whatever, and you earned enough from their, you know, ad revenue share to pay for the premium that you are um, subscribing to. It, it, it has an impact. Um, so we've kind of changed our curation rules to, to focus on that. Uh, obviously, you still have to, you know, post from the UI and, and meet the minimum bar of quality. But if you do those two things and your premium, um, you know, premium is easily going to be paying for itself. Um, Mr. Hyde said, trust me, more people will be on premium after they see what they are missing out on. Absolutely. Um, Simple Game also said premium is so worth it. Um, he's going to chat it up more. Uh, Esme Smith said, is there any chance of converting a thread into NFTs? And then hosting that NFT on our weave. So it becomes available on the wallet forever. So we're working on Leo NFTs. You guys know this, um, you know, we've got that still being built in the background. Um, some other things that we kind of have on the longer term roadmap. One thing I want to do is 
the ability to convert long form articles into NFTs um, and then have those be tradable. And what's going to be cool is coinciding that with the evergreen uh, rewards program. Because the vision that I have for that is that you could create an NFT, like let's say Taskmaster takes one of his articles, he turns it into an NFT and he sells it. Let's say that he, you know, that, that article gets, you know, a thousand views a month. So, you know, just picking out random numbers, let's just say that that earns $30 a month in, in ad revenue share from the Evergreen Rewards Pool. Uh, Taskmaster could potentially N- turn that into an NFT and then go out and try to sell that NFT. Let's just say he tries to sell it for, um, you know, let's just say he tries to sell it for $100. So he says, this NFT, I want to sell it for $100 and it already earns $30 a month in ad revenue. Um, so I'm going to sell this NFT and it's almost like people can then look at it and be like, okay, I'm investing in this NFT version of this article where when I buy the NFT, I will own the ad revenue share that it earns. Um, so I think that would be super cool, um, in terms of like a long, long term version of turning articles into NFTs and then tying it in with what we've got with Leo ads, uh, and evergreen content. Um, I think that would be really exciting. Um, and obviously then, you know, also the, you know, the person who buys the NFT could work on driving more traffic. Like, let's say someone becomes really confident that they can drive traffic to articles. They go out and buy a bunch of articles on Inleo, the NFT versions of them, and then start driving traffic to them. Uh, Tass, you got your hand up? Yes. Uh, what you just described, and I'm glad you're doing that because I was going to do it as a layer two at some point for Leo Glossary. What you just described solved the wiki problem. Anybody can contribute a page to Leo Glossary. Out of Leo Glossary account, we create an NFT. We send the NFT to the person who created its wallet, and the system then pays that person, and they own the page, and they can do whatever they want. But it's all creating, quote, unquote, Wikipedia on Leo. Think of how big that could be. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, imagine if every entry, you know, I mean, obviously, I don't think a lot of us are Wikipedia contributors, but imagine that Wikipedia contributors could go out and do, you know, what we're describing and and turn their articles into NFTs uh, and then earn the revenue from, you know, creating a George Clooney page and keeping it up uh, updated. So, yeah, I think there's a huge potential there uh, for when we build that. And like I said, that is kind of a long term roadmap item. That is a huge development on its own. I mean, that could literally be its own app. Uh, it won't be. It'll be built into the UI, but it, it's that's a huge development. Um, Sammy Hive said, how can we boost traffic? Time to grow our X followership. Follow me on X and I'll follow you back. Let's grow together. Um, yeah, I think, you know, especially with the evergreen changes every month when people start to see the money rolling into certain authors who are driving in traffic from X, Google, Reddit, other places, uh, I think there's going to be more incentive to actually bring in traffic. Um, and that has never existed on Hive in any format. So we have now monetized and we've successfully outgrown the seven day payout window. So when you post a blog post, you're now earning for seven days normally, like you always were for the last, you know, you know, eight years of Hive or whatever. Um, but now beyond that seven day payout window, if your articles are generating, you know, a thousand views a month, uh, like I said, I just threw out a random number, but let's just say that's $30, um, you know, $30 a month. Now your article earned whatever it normally would have earned in the seven day payout window. Uh, and now it's earning it for, um, you know, for, for in perpetuity, it's earning rewards based on the views that it gets. So now you can create a base of articles. Let's say you make, you know, two articles a day for a year, you know, you're talking about over 700 articles if you make really high quality articles that generate traffic, you, you could be looking at a huge payout every single month. I mean, it, it could be thousands of dollars a month uh, if you start to generate a lot of views. So uh, not only do you benefit from that, but then there's also a percentage of that that goes back to the Leo Power APY pool. Uh, so and, and all of that revenue is being paid as U.S. dollars or Bitcoin or whatever format our advertisers pay us in. And then we're using that to buy Leo. So it's it's really incredible if you start to add up the you know the long term ramifications of having this massive base of content generating uh, views every single month. So 
Sammy Hive is asking a good question, you know, how can we boost traffic? I think that's something that every person who creates articles on Inleo and on Hive in general should be considering. How do we boost traffic? Because it not only benefits you, but it, it benefits the entire platform through the ad revenue. Uh, Eric, you got your hand up? Yes, and, and so the two best practices that I have uh, applied into my daily basis is that, so for example, right, right now we do have a couple of collaborations with uh, some influencers and X, but also one of the plans that we are currently ongoing and we have 14 people that are part of this is that we are, we are boosting and empowering them on X so that they also grow their own following and we are kind of creating or incubating our own lion influencers on X. So imagine what would happen if the 1,700 or 2,000 lions right now because a bigger presence on X and start, you know, getting more influence in general. Imagine how how much how much of a reach we would have, and also that's that's just one of the parts of, of growing your own audience for your own good because having a bigger voice or a louder voice on on X also benefits you, but also benefits Leo. And the other one is that. Try to use SEO for your articles. I know it's it's more troublesome. I know you might not think it's it, it's uh, profitable in the short term, but in the long term, if you have if you have a a better title, if you have more images, if you have good link usage, if you are targeting keywords in the correct way, it all it it will all pay out in the future. And you just got you just have to remember that in Leo is here for the next ten years. We have the budget for it, so you can build for the future on in Leo because we are going to be here as a platform in the future. So it's just those two best practices for anyone who wants to increase their traffic organically. Love it, yeah. And I think there should be a lot more content created that gives out good tips like that about how. Um, you know, you can grow your traffic and, and do all that stuff. So Taskmaster, you, you want to go ahead? Yeah, one, one thing I want to add just to what Eric's saying, and it is a good thing to think about income, which is exactly what is being discussed about the, the, the revenue flow and, and what am I getting in my wallet every month and, and that type of thing. But also, I would also go back to that idea of business owner. Yeah. Wealth is generated through equity, and I don't care what page is generating the traffic, that helps Leo. So every page that brings in a little bit more traffic, that's going to help the entire ecosystem. How much, that is debatable, but over time, as we get more and more stuff built, as we get more involved, as we get more page views, as we get more ad revenue, as the token goes up, guess what? The value of your equity grows. And and Cal said, and, and I'd like to throw another concept out here. Cal said, uh, or maybe it was Eric, one of the two said, where they can envision a point in time where the evergreen content actually exceeds what people are getting out of the reward pools. Here's another idea. The growth in your equity is growing at a rate each year that outpaces what you're getting in income. Just think about that and the potentiality that that holds for each of us in the future. 100%, 100%. Um, still on the topic of SEO, Ahmad Langa asks, an easily accessible guideline for SEO would be great. What about having Leo AI help in SEO for long form posts? Um, yeah, I think, I mean, I, I know that people have written stuff about SEO, so if anyone else can kind of go through and find some good stuff, maybe share it, find a way where we can kind of pin it somewhere, uh, that would be awesome. Uh, if anyone wants to DM Eric or DM myself, uh, or even just tag us on a thread or something with all the different links um, to SEO guides you find, maybe we can just create a, a page in the docs for it. So probably the best way to reach me would be to just tag me in a thread uh, and, and drop the links in there. Uh, Nifty, you want to go ahead? Yeah, I just wanted to add, uh, 
Core Explorer is very good at SEO optimization. So uh, check out his his articles, and you, you can get a lot of uh, a lot of really good stuff from just from like the way he writes and hyperlinks and and alt text on photos and stuff like that. So yeah, shut. Yep, definitely. Yeah, I, I've always paid attention to what he does, and he is. I think he actually is the number one traffic driver uh, in terms of uh, long form articles to Inleo uh, last time I checked. So, um, you know, just the way he writes articles and it's not necessarily just about volume. You know, you can create 10,000 articles a year. Um, if they're not optimized, then they're not going to drive in the traffic. And if they're not shared on platforms, they're not going to drive in the traffic. So I know he does some really interesting things with driving in traffic uh, every single month. Um, iJets asks, could there be a calendar module inside the Inleo UI threads in particular so that we would be up to date with all the thread casts taking place on a daily basis and sometimes with quite short span previous announcement? Um, yeah, so I mean, we added this thread cast module like you guys can see right now, my profile appears at the top of the UI to indicate that there's an ongoing thread cast. Um, I think at some point we will add the ability to choose a time frame. So you'll be able to, when you create a, Right now, when you create a threadcast, you essentially just tag it, hashtag threadcast, and that's how the UI uh, picks it up. Um, in the future, we want to do something where there's an actual module, uh, kind of like for polls, which ironically don't work right now, but kind of like for polls where there's like a, a specific button to create one. Um, so that will probably come at, at some point throughout this year, um, and we'll add the ability to choose a time frame because it would just make it more efficient. Right now, we've kind of we have kind of a hack version of how uh, Threadcasts work. If you guys have noticed, there's kind of like you tag it hashtag Threadcast, and then it has to get a certain number of comments to show at the top, uh, and then the purple light shows only some of the time. So it's kind of like a we've kind of created it without creating you know the full framework just because we wanted to get it out right away. Um, I really actually like the way it works now, uh, but just having the ability to choose the time frame I think would would have a positive impact. Um, so that will probably come at some point in the early half of this year, if I had to guess. Um, Lukiel asked, uh, talking about the article for Evergreen Rewards, does it also include articles published through the UI? Yeah, so in order to earn Evergreen Rewards, you actually have to publish it from the Inleo UI. So if your article is published from any other UI, it won't be eligible for Evergreen Rewards. There's a couple reasons for this. Um, you know, from, from a you know, business fundamentals perspective, you know, I mentioned canonical links earlier. It just makes sense to have the articles published from RUI and reward those articles specifically. Uh, from a technical perspective, it would be a lot harder for us to index all articles created on all Hive platforms. Uh, so it actually just kind of works out nicely that, you know, from a you know business perspective and from a technical perspective, it's better for us to have articles uh, published from the UI. So if you want evergreen rewards, you got to publish from inleo.io. Uh, along with if you want Leo rewards as of today. Uh, Bitcoin Man asked for some links to best SEO practices. Um, I saw John respond to that in a written comment. Um, and then, like I said, it would be nice if someone could kind of go through and maybe find some good articles to it, and then I can add it to the docs uh, so that we can all find them. Uh, Mr. Hive asked, if the payout window has been extended, uh, is it only functional with articles posted through the InLeo front end? Uh, or any article from any of the interfaces. So, uh, like I just said, it's um, you got to publish from the front end, uh, from the Inleo.io front end, if you want to earn Evergreen rewards. Um, let's see what we got here. Uh, IDK Samad said, "Bring traffic from Web two X and Reddit. Two places to do that, in my opinion. Yeah, there's so many places where you can bring in traffic, and you know." You can cross post to Medium and link to Inleo. You can, uh, you know, make X posts and and turn them into thread storms, and then uh, you know share your article at the end. I did that with a Rune article recently, and it got a bunch of views. So there's a ton of ways to like, you know, there's SEO ways to get views in the long run, and there's a ton of ways to get views in the short run, like through you know sharing the article out in various places. So highly recommend you know doing some research into how to generate traffic. You know, there's plenty of content out there on Google. Uh, about how you should generate traffic. You know, people have been working on this for well over a decade now since blogging became popular. So taking some of those best practices and applying it to your Inleo account is a great way to earn more. Um, and like I said, this is the first time 
I've ever seen any platform, not even just on Hive, but just in general, where you can actually, you know, focus on just generating traffic and, and actually like earn real money in real time, uh, pretty much instantaneously every single month. So, um, Sammy Hive, is there any limitation on number of posts to be published on Inleo front end? Uh, publishers get happy when their quality post is uploaded and rewarded. Um, there's no limit in terms of how Leo.voter curates. There's no like real defined limit. Um, there are kind of like Hive unspoken best practices of like, you know, if you post 20 blog posts a day, people are probably going to get mad at you. So if you just follow the, the best practices on Hive in terms of long form posting, you're going to be fine, which I think typically stems to around like one to four blog posts a day. Uh, and, you know, obviously ensuring that they're high quality. Um, and then obviously with threads, you can post as many as you want. You can post 20,000 threads a day if you wanted to. Um, Sammy Hive, how can we get more people and users organically? Does Zealy campaign help us? Yeah, the Zealy really helps us. I've often described the Zealy as being kind of like a laser beam. So like we have, a, a you know, 2,000 month active users and just in, on Hive in general, you know, we have this really nice core user base that does... Uh, we all kind of do like almost philanthropic philanthropic work for the blockchain, you know, trying to grow it. Um, but what Zeely does is kind of focus all that attention on specific things. So like we can focus people into a space or focus them into a tweet. Um, and that, that definitely helps, you know, push things along. So Zeely is great for like focusing all of our varied attentions onto something specific. Um, there's a lot of good organic ways to get people in too. Like, you know, word of mouth is an, an amazing way to get people in. And, and like I said, if you, if everyone who was premium today, which is 200 people invited two friends to be premium, you know, that would be another, um, you know, that'd be another huge hit to the, to the goal of getting to a thousand premium members. So it, it doesn't take much, especially when you look at something like word of mouth uh, to grow organically. Um, your soul was, talking about a hole he sees in the needs for curation. I see no way in my feed to track posts in the communities I follow and no way to build a favorites list uh, or are these premium features. So building a favorites list is going to be added to premium soon. It is on the premium list of upcoming features. Um, and, um, and, and I'm talking about a different type of favorites list. There actually is a way to create a list now. Um, so you can create, uh, if you if you are premium, you can go to the lists page, it's under the more menu, uh, and you can create a list of any users. I've actually been looking, and I put up a couple threads about this. Uh, I feel like it's really underutilized, the, the lists feature, and you can make public or private lists. So I'd love to see more lists. I know John manages the uh, premium lions list, uh, which I use very regularly to look through threads created by all the premium users um, and curate and, and comment on them. Uh, so you can create great lists for that. And then coming soon is going to be the ability to see posts from people in the list that you create. So right now, lists are only for threads, uh, but we are working on getting blog posts uh, in there. Um, so that is coming soon. And then in terms of communities, uh, we do have community pages. You can see all the blog posts created in specific communities. Uh, but I do want to add an actual feed where you can, you know, you can tag it to your homepage. And you can see all the, the community's blog posts. It's so like if you were following five communities, you can see all of them in one feed. Um, that is something that I want to work on. Uh, Dagger212 asked, um, can we essentially change the Leo token symbol so it's not confused with other tokens? Uh, Brando said, I second that. Um, I have thought about this. I, I, I think at some point in the future, we could uh, consider it. It, it. It's just a huge change, both in terms of you know, back end and in terms of like with the user base, uh, you know, changing tokens is not an easy thing to do. Um, it, it requires a lot of things to get changed, you know, from bridges to listings on exchanges, on decentralized exchanges, liquidity pools. Um, you know, it, it requires a lot of work. So I think at some point it's possible we could do it. Um, I don't I don't know that it actually matters a ton that that, you know, it's not it's named the same thing as, you know, this other Leo token that's obviously very well known. Um, I don't think it's a huge deal. It, it, you know, there's, there's ways around it and we've kind of built those ways with like rap Leo and B Leo and P Leo. So, uh, we'll see, um, maybe at some point in the future, but right now there's no concrete plans for that. Uh, Ahmad Manga said, thinking of creating a text adventure game to be played on Leo threads. If I did, I hope to get a lot of views. Um, 
and then Lipe 100 said, I'm setting up a wiki for a tabletop role-playing game. The game itself won't be on Inleo, but I'll have the rule book for free on Inleo. Um, yeah, I mean, both of you guys seem to have really cool ideas for, for doing things and using the tools that we've built, you know, kind of harping back on what Taskmaster said. So, you know, we build the tools, you guys find cool ways to use them. Uh, and, and, you know, we're building out things like the Evergreen Rewards Pool so that, you know, when you build these things and, and put effort into growing them, you actually benefit from it. So that is the goal. Uh, Sunseeker asked for a few different things to be added to long form snippets, templates, uh, parallel text and sliders, uh, and a button to add links. Um, I saved these things and uh, they are, a few of them are already on the roadmap. Um, so I will work on getting them added. Uh, I know templates would be really nice, especially for some of us who, who have pretty like formatted posts. I know I do with a lot of the videos and stuff that I post. So uh, templates coming soon. Uh, and then the other stuff I will also uh, work on getting added. Uh, Bitcoin man said, search on mobile. Um, so yes, there, you actually can search on mobile. It's kind of a way to like hack it. Um, but I will work on getting the search feature added to mobile. We just haven't built it into the mobile UI yet. Uh, so coming very soon. Um, Sammy Hive said the AI is coming soon. Will it be limited for premium services? John answered in text form that yes, it will. Yeah, in order to use Leo AI, you will need to be premium. Um, two reasons for this. One, it's a great way to build more value for being premium. And two, uh, it actually costs us money to run Leo AI for each query. So like every time you would ask it something, it actually costs a little bit of money, uh, which is the same way that like, you know, chat GPT's, uh, API works. So if you ask it something, you actually, it, it costs a little bit of money. So, um, you know, there's, there's kind of two reasons that it, it's limited to premiums only. Um, Mr. Hive, since visibility is one of the long pre prerequisites of earning Leo ads rewards, uh, would threads be added to this? Yeah, I think, I think we're going to add threads to the evergreen pool. Uh, I actually was looking at this the other day. The only thing is there's not that many threads that would even reach the threshold. It's pretty much only thread casts that, that reach the threshold uh, for evergreen rewards, um, which is 200 views. So it, there aren't that many threads out there that actually would even cross the threshold, which is why I wasn't really focused on adding it to the, to the evergreen contract. Um, but, you know, as the platform grows, I, I could definitely see threads start to get more and more views. Uh, that would that would make sense to have it in Evergreen. So uh, possibly in the very near future, I will make the change to the contract because it's kind of already all in place to be added. I don't think it would take much effort. Um, so, but you know, one thing I've been seeing and, and Taskmaster has talked about this and, and I've talked about this too, is like there's so many posts on X that get like 50,000 views, 100,000 views, you know, you know, an Elon tweet gets, you know, 20 million views. So you know, there is a future where threads start to get a ton of views. Um, and, you know, that, that comes with building the platform and building more users. Uh, Tashfresh said, music on Leo will get 200 views. Yeah. And if you guys build things like these, you know, the games we just mentioned, and, you know, people have really cool ideas for leveraging the threads tools that we're building, uh, there are ways where, you know, I could, I could definitely see some threads that get a lot of views. So I think we will add it to the contract. Uh, right now, it's only long form. Uh, so... Um, Mr. Hive, is one stake on Leo going to be equivalent or measure up to the amount of Leo ads shared? So yeah, you're the, to get the Leo power, uh, ad revenue, uh, from that Leo power pool, um, which you guys saw go out on January 18th, uh, I think it was, um, it's for the first requisite is that you have a minimum of 500, uh, Leo power staked. So if you have more than 500 Leo power, then you are, um, eligible for the next variable. And the next variable is that you have to be active, uh, on in Leo. So you have to be an active curator, you know, actively using your stake to upvote, uh, either threads or posts or both. Um, and then if you meet those two criteria, then you get the, you know, a share of the Leo ads pool and the share is stake weighted. So it's based on how much Leo power you have staked. So meet the prerequisites and then it's based on, uh, how much Leo you have staked relative to everybody else. Uh, so you saw probably most of you saw that one alpha was the top earner from Leo ads revenue. Uh, cause he has the most Leo staked. Um, the, uh, Ahmad Manga said, wow, the feature of 
showing who's on a thread cast is very useful. I saw it in purple and jumped in. Yeah. So uh, we kind of hit on that earlier. Um, you know, adding more cool features for thread cast is definitely a, a focus of mine. Um, I love thread cast. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Mr. Hive, would long form and short form be given equal attention in terms of vis visibility and upvotes? I assume you're talking about like feeds and, and content feeds. And yeah, we are working on better feeds, especially for, for long form. Um, one thing you guys may have seen is we're playing with uh, recommendations and that uses Leo AI. Uh, so if you look at like a long form post and scroll to the bottom, right above the comment section, it'll recommend a thread. Uh, and I've noticed some issues with it. Like it's not always recommending a very good thread. Um, one thing we're gonna add is it'll start to recommend posts and threads. And then X also recently, probably a few months ago, added something where if you scroll to the bottom of a X uh, tweet, then you'll see recommended tweets, you know, that are that are actually pretty relevant. So uh, we're going to add that for threads as well. So like if you're looking at a thread and there's no replies or something, it'll if you keep scrolling, it'll give you like four or five recommended threads that uh, it, it'll ask Leo AI for some recommendations and then uh, it'll feed it into that feed. Um, and I think that would be a great way to create more kind of content visibility in general. Um, Tokenized Society, when you open the post editor, the Leo Finance tag is loaded by default. Perhaps that can be changed now after this update. Yeah, after this update, we're going to remove that. So if you want to tag Leo, and, and this is a good point as well. If you want to tag Leo Finance or put a post in the Leo Finance community, um, you'll be able to do so manually uh, and and obviously get it in there. And and the reason for doing so would be if it's crypto and finance. That, that community still exists. So uh, Leo Finance is still, you know, a community on Hive and a community on in Leo. And, uh, you know, I'd still love to see some high quality content. I, I scroll through that feed all the time um, in that community feed. So, you know, the, the community still exists for that. And now it's just a, you know, it's a, a notch under the umbrella of Inlio. IDK Samad said, best way to read the docs is use ChatGPT. Ask it to give key points around the whole thing. Free alpha. Yeah, you can definitely do that. If you want to check out the docs and use ChatGPT to help you... Uh, read through them faster. Definitely, definitely a cool way to do it. Um, and I don't know if you guys noticed, but we actually added the ability to search the docs uh, in the new search feature. So if you go to the search feature at the top right uh, and then and then click on the Inleo option, it actually lets you search the docs uh, and then it'll link you out to them. So a uh, little, little hack there. Um, Esme Smith, are we getting the top performing content that earned rewards in the dashboard? Yeah. So. Uh, if you ever use Twitter's uh, dashboard, it, it kind of looks, there's some similarities to it. Like it'll show you which threads and posts you have that are getting the most views. It'll also show you which threads and posts are getting the most rewards uh, for your account. Um, so you'll be able to look into that information and, and kind of use it to help you make better content and earn more rewards. So yes, the dashboard will have some cool stuff in it. Uh, and if you're premium, it'll have, you know, even deeper analytics and then the ability to ask Leo AI, you know, what is my top performing content in the last month? And how do you recommend I, you know, make content that's similar to it? And it'll give you tips. So definitely gonna be some cool features built into that dashboard. Um, Brando28 kind of asked a similar question. Is there a way to monitor Leo rewards, uh, like Leo from curating, or is this part of the new dashboard feature? Yeah, that is coming in the new dashboard feature. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, I've shared some teaser pictures of it. So it's, it's coming very soon. Uh, we're working on hooking up a few data data feeds, and then once that's done, uh, we'll release it. But the UI for it is, is fully built out now. Um, Ahmad Manga asked a question specifically uh, for Taskmaster. Uh, does the Leo Ads reward for a Leo Glossary page go to the original writer of it or to the Leo Glossary account? You want to take that task? Yeah, well, what's happening now is Everything that's posted under Leo Glossary, uh, which nothing was paid out to Leo Glossary last month, by the way, because Leo Glossary didn't meet the requirements because I wasn't voting out of the account. But anything that comes in with Leo Glossary goes to the Leo Glossary account. There's no way to separate it. What I was talking about was Cal's future vision of creating an NFT, where then the system pays out based upon the account that's holding the NFT. And if somebody creates a page, as he said, for George Clooney, then the George Clooney page could be, or the NFT for that George Clooney page 
could be sent to the one who created it, and then all paths go to that. So that's really what's going to change the wiki uh, in the future. But right now, what you're looking at is the more that Leo Glossary generates, it all goes into the uh, basic pool of buying more Leo and distributing to LP holders. Sweet. Um, what else we got here? Uh, as a Smith, is it possible to have subscriptions in three, six, 12 months? Yeah, I mentioned before, we are gonna have a six and 12 month option uh, at some point. So that will be released in the Sooniverse. Um, Lukeel asked, what happened to Rethread? I've been unable to access it since the morning through mobile. Um, I can access it just fine. If you can post a screenshot of why you can't see it, uh, you've got to click the three dot menu uh, on mobile and then the rethread option should appear. Uh, if you don't see it, then uh, take a screenshot and then post a thread and, and use hashtag feedback so I can see what's going on and then get it fixed. Uh, Mr. Hive, what's the total number or volume of the Leo token? I'm saying this because many Hive users or outside of Hive would buy it more uh, if it shows greater signs of mooning. Um, so if you're interested in tokenomics, um, there's about 17.2 million Leo tokens out there, I think right now. Uh, you can view that. You used to be able to view it on Tribal uh, or on Leo Dex, but um, we are reworking Leo Dex, possibly even building it into the in Leo UI itself. Uh, we're still kind of working on the vision for that. So now, since, uh, if you want to see it, I would go to tribaldex.com slash tokens. Uh, I just replied to your comment and linked it there if you want to find it. Um, and then you can see the, Le you can search Leo and then see the to current supply and price and market cap and all that. Um, and in terms of other tokenomics, there was a really good section added to the docs for tokenomics. So if you go to the search bar at the top right of InLeo and then um, click InLeo and then there's a tokenomics section, you can either, either search for it or just click on it. Uh, and then I would highly recommend reading that. Um, you can see, uh, you know, all the various tokenomics, but there's a max supply of Leo at 50 million tokens. I know a lot of people don't even know that. Um, so I would definitely recommend reading those docs and, and learning more. Task, you got your hand up. Yeah, one, one thing I want to say on this subject, and again, it goes back to, to the owner idea. Uh, my opinion, and, and maybe people disagree, but my opinion, the problem with Web3 is there is so much focus on tokenomics and on price and getting people to buy the token. And really, there's very little emphasis on value, value creation, utility, use case, build-in platforms that have the, the flywheel effect, the network effect, everything we've been discussing. And so when you start to throw up, well, getting people to buy the token, everybody's talking the same thing. And I think it's very important that we start to change the conversation that the token is a reflection of what value we create, not that we're driven by the price of the token, because markets can be bipolar, markets can be insane, markets can go up, they can go down, there's bears, there's bulls. I mean, suddenly if a bull market takes off and the price of Leo goes to a dollar, does that mean the Leo project is suddenly viable when it wasn't viable at four cents? It's total nonsense. Of course the Leo project's viable at four cents because of what's being built. So yes, token price is what everybody talks about. Everybody wants the price to go up, green candle, people, mooning, all that good stuff. The important thing is what value is being created by Leo because that's what's long-term. Pumps are great. The problem is pumps are always followed by dumps. And that gets very, very painful, as Cal was saying. A lot of founders that he talked to in the past are no longer around. Their stuff went belly up. Keep focusing on adding value. Every thread you do, does it have value? What does it do? What network effects are you looking at kicking off? What are you, like Nifty said, what do you give into the platform? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay. Last few uh, questions here. Okay, I got five more and then we can do uh, closing thoughts from the speaker panel and jump out of here. Um, we've been going for a while, almost two hours. All right. 
Uh, yeah, let's let's just rapid fire this and then get you guys' closing thoughts. Um, I already answered this one. Is there a way to transfer account creation tokens between accounts or are accounts locked to the account that created them? Um, Tokenized Society replied, I don't think there's a way to transfer them, but Django said, setting something up that allows others to use your tokens. Yeah, you can use, I think Hive onboarding is the way to do that. Um, I'm sure there's some blog posts out there if you search it up um, that tell you how you can share your account creation tokens um, with learning services. Uh, iJath said, I guess our NFT articles will be directly registered on the Hive chain as all of our interactions are. So aren't they rather in Leo scriptions more than NFTs considering they'll live forever on Hive? Um, yeah, they would likely use some sort of NFT protocol, whether that's like Hive Engine or um, I know VSC is working on some uh, NFT stuff. So uh, it, it'll be some sort of transferable asset on chain, most likely a custom JSON, uh, if you know how those work. Um, as may Smith, if in Leo articles become NFTs and rewards pool earns along with NFT minting the creator loyalty percentage, we are technically creating dividend income. Yeah. I mean, if you look at, you know, you you create articles on in Leo and, and, you know, you earn, uh, you earn the seven day payout window, but now you earn the evergreen rewards. You are essentially earning, you know, rewards in perpetuity provided you get, you know, a certain amount of views every month. Um, and you're earning based on those views. So yeah, I mean, if you were to create, you know, NFTs of your articles, then you're kind of getting a, I, I guess the way I would frame it is that you can either like sit back and earn your kind of monthly revenues from, from those views, or you could go out and try to kind of get like almost like a advanced payment on, on those, you know, on that monthly amount uh, by selling your articles uh, as NFTs. So there's gonna be a really cool economy that comes out of that, in my opinion, you know, when we build it at some point in the future. Um, so that catches us up on all the questions. Um, it, one alpha keeps asking about the Leo ads activity. What is active enough? You have to be active on the platform. You gotta curate, you gotta use threads. It's, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I think if you use the platform to any level of activity, you are eligible. Um, but that covers us on questions. Um, so let's just go around the horn real quick. Any closing thoughts that you guys have? Um, and then we will close this out and let you guys get on with your day. But I hope you enjoyed all the announcements. Um, I definitely enjoyed this space. I think we got a lot of good questions answered. We're at like 350 comments in the Threadcast. So love to see it. Um, John, you want to give us your, your closing thoughts? Yeah, for sure, man. Um... Just, I mean, the, the big thing for me, and this is, you know, I'm I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. I'm not the the most technical guy. Uh, I have limited skill sets, but I know what I can do. I know I can show up and use this thing each and every day, and that's what all of us can do. No matter no matter what background we come from, what our experience level is with content creation, with social media, with any of this, the more we use this, the better it is for absolutely everyone on the platform so don't ever anyone listening to this think oh i don't know what to contribute literally show up make some threads you're contributing so just keep doing that beautiful things will happen awesome yes love love the psa um task you want to give your closing thoughts yeah, uh, most of you know who listen to Cryptomaniac like John Go. I don't get out very much. So uh, my perspective of what's going on outside the, the ecosystem we have here in terms of Web3 can be rather limited uh, based upon individual projects at least. But I'm going to hypothesize this hour and a half or two hour conversation. You don't hear many Web3 projects that discuss stuff like we've discussed this is business building people and if you aren't excited about the long-term prospects of leo and the opportunities it is providing not the token price not the mooning not the lambos but the ability to own a piece of a growing digital platform you're missing the boat because that's what's being offered here this is digital real estate your leo token gives you a piece of Leo. You own Leo. So now it's up to us to make sure 
our lot is clean, make sure the grass is mowed, make sure the house is painted, and make sure we grow the value of our piece of real estate, keep growing it. Yes, I love the ownership mentality of it. And, you know, like I said, I'd love to see our, you know, 2000 monthly active user base kind of start to take on that mentality and, and grow things. If you haven't read an article called 1000 True Fans by Kevin Kelly, I highly recommend reading it. I, I revisit it very frequently. And I think it, uh, I think if you take some of the principles talked about in there and, and apply it to Leo, it, you know, the, the effects and the growth that we could see are, are enormous. Um, Eric may or may not still be with us. I know that he was driving. Um, so Eric, do you want to give us your closing thoughts if you're around? Yes. Uh, I, I just basically want to say that, uh, I have been part of the ecosystem for, uh, almost seven years, the high video, the crypto space for probably like, uh, six and a half because I actually got into high just uh, by creating content, I became a content creator first. Then I became a DJ in the crypto space uh, like six months later after I started learning everything. And I've been uh, part of Leo for almost, I think it's going to be three years. I don't know, maybe I'm exaggerating, maybe two. But I have never been more excited of what's to come, both as a team member, but also as a user, because I am one of the most dedicated content creators uh, in the platform uh, for long form, not for short form. So, uh, yeah, I just really excited. It's it's going to take to take for all of the community members to uh, put their own into helping Leo grow. But as Taskmaster says, we are shareholders. Um, the Leo token is our stake in the platform. If in Leo grows, if in Leo becomes successful, not only us, but also the Hive ecosystem in general is going to, uh, I don't want to say thrive, but it's going to, to outperform the competition. So uh, yeah, just, just very, very glad that uh, this came to fruition. I know that we spoke about it a few months ago, then we came back to, to this a couple of weeks ago, and then it was, it just felt like the the right move at the right moment. Uh, yeah, like from, from here onwards and forward. Absolutely. Yeah, these were some big changes that we've been talking about for a long time. So I am very happy that we were able to make them, you know, from a technical perspective, and then also, you know, as a platform, you know, like I said, we've really shifted the focus from, you know, bleeding value and, and not collecting the value and capturing the value in a way that I think we were capable of. Um, and we, we've really shifted the focus in order to, you know, capture all that value and, and bring it into the Leo token. So I'm really happy with, you know, how things have progressed and, and where we're at today. And, you know, we're sitting at 200. And I just looked at the premium subscriber count and we started with 199 when we got on this and now we're at 2 202 um so i'm very happy to see you know kind of the the continual growth of that as we chase after the you know the ultimate goal of of um you know a thousand by the end of q1 so great progress everybody uh thank you all for showing up for this um space i know we had a ton of ton of uh listeners throughout the space and then we had a ton of comments in the threadcast i hope we did a good job answering all of your questions. Um, so thank you uh, for coming. Thank you to Eric um, for helping me co-host. Uh, thanks, John, for speaking. Thank you, Taskmaster, as well. And thank you, Nifty, um, for, for jumping on the panel. Really appreciate all of your guys' takes. Um, I think we will be back on Tuesday for the next AMA. So uh, we'll see you guys then. Uh, thanks again for coming, and peace.